Today we'll print and frame picture from Venice, Italy, and we will also compare my print to the scan, uh, like digital scan of this negative and also commercially available print from this negative, so fully digital version of this picture. I have a delivery of my prints, which you can order on my website. I really like the modern services like this, because they increase accessibility of my work. And you can experiment a lot with the different materials, different printing and different arrangement of your prints. For example, in this case, I ordered the print inside the frame. I never actually print with the mat and never arrange the prints like this. And as you can understand, it gives completely different wipe and it looks a bit different. For me, it looks like a final product and the paper inside this print is actually not photo paper and the print created with the offset printing as far as I understand. So it would give a texture of the paper and give more thickness of the paper itself. Also in my case, I can, for example, digitize my small darkroom print and just enlarge it in a bigger scale because wet printing uh, by hand more than 30 by 30 centimeters, it's a bit too hard for my small darkroom. So let's check my digital file, what I create with my Plastex scanner. This photo made with the Kodak Gold 200 and I really like the colors and warmth of this negative. And because I have a digital camera on this trip, we can dive in in a video footage from this shot. The idea behind it today's printing session is try to repeat the same size of the prints and just compare what you can achieve with the fully digital process with a just, you know, analog starting point and in comparison how the picture looks like with a fully analog process with a direct printing with a C-type paper from the darkroom. So let's heat up the chemistry and meanwhile let's find this negative. So let's find the negative and try to make the same scaling what I have on the digital print to make exactly the same format of the picture and frame it in the same fashion. And only here when I see this video for the second time, I see I already have a mistake. So I found the same kind of a negative with the same bolts, but on a different day. This is also a really good picture, but unfortunately this is not what we want to print and I will just realize it when I make enlargements because for me it was not so obvious in the darkroom for small negative which picture actually I'm looking at. To make the same size of the picture I will increase the sides of the easel to see the full picture and later we will just crop it in back. And here in this moment I realize I have a wrong negative, but anyway, you saw this scene in the same video clip in the beginning of this video. It's more or less 45 degrees from this scene and it's just a different day and a little bit different time. So I will load the good negative in the carrier and let's try to find out the good enlargement for this negative and try to fit it in the same way as you have on the digital brand. Because I have a reference, it's quite easy to find the same cropping ratio and the same picture. But actually from the negative, from mine larger, I can actually print with the borders and have a more flexibility. So if you check the focus, I am trying to find the smallest grain, what I have on this picture. But the picture itself was shot on f1.2 and 1 60th of the second, if I'm not mistaken. I'm really good with the handheld photos and I can pull out the focus and pull out the 1 30th of the second I think or even 1 15th of the second. For a few projects in the past I actually preferably use 1 45th of the second to make a motion blur on the pictures as like people moving in a shot. So let's go with the calibration and try to align the sensitive photo head in a maximum intensity position under the negative and set up all the settings on my photo head. Today I'm using not standard settings, uh, I'm using only two channels and cyan channel completely to zero. 
And don't forget to put the filters inside the head before you make a test exposure. I don't really like this method, but I just want to give it a shot once again. So let's develop the first test print and because I have like four or five rotations only on this chemistry, it's the same chemistry what I used before. And to develop this paper we need a two-step process and first step is a color developer for 45 seconds with a constant rotation. And the next step is the bleach fix also for 45 seconds rotation in the drum. And after this step your paper is no longer sensitive to light and you can basically wash it with the tap water or in the drum. I will quickly dry this picture and we will compare it to the initial print and I will just give my comments on this one. For my taste it's a little bit reddish so it means we need to move the cyan channel, especially you can see it here on the posts. And if you compare it to my digital scan you can clearly see a bit reddish tint. So let's open my lab book and put this test print and tape it down and make my notes on the date and the settings on this print. And as a next step we will try to make a test print and I want to make the rendition and here this is a problem because the print is too reddish and I need to simultaneously move two channels. So I need to move the cyan channel and it means I need to move yellow and magenta in the same time. If you have a symmetrically good settings like I have on my photo head at the moment, it means I have a really good color balance and it means my development of the film was really good. And because it's 62 on yellow channel and 62 on magenta channel, I don't really need to calculate anything and think about symmetrically I move the two channels in the same time or not really. But this is why I like the method with the cyan channel filter on the 60. First of all, the lenses for enlargement have a much more sharpness and the edge retention and edge sharpness close to the fully open, so around f.56 or f8. Because it's a flat field lenses, it's much better to keep everything in line and because we make enlargement and it's a relatively big enlargement from 35mm, I want to keep the same settings and don't have any vignetting on the edges. And here I see my second mistake, because I don't remember in which direction I should move the yellow and magenta channel in the same time, I make a mistake and make the just opposite direction of movement and make picture more reddish than before. So in this case let's reprint it again and now we just need to increase the magenta and yellow channels and not decrease both of them. So it's just a little bit stupid to move the same two settings in the same time when you can move only one. And when you create the additional space for mistake you will for sure make it especially in the days like this. So in principle don't listen anyone, use all the free channels and it works much better, simplify your life and the picture looks exactly the same because of the light works exactly the same. In addition you have much more open aperture and the timing itself close to the 10 seconds so you have a less intensity and because this paper is actually optimized for laser systems in the industrial printing it has much more sensitivity than the paper in the past for color printing. And the reason for that you can print faster in the industrial scale and also the old school laser dyes doesn't have enough power to supply this demand. So in, on a wet print here I also see additional problem and it's more balanced to the neutral light and it doesn't look like a sunset. I really like this picture and the color balance, maybe it's a bit too bright, but it looks like a day picture and not the evening picture. And once again I forget to make a settings and I just expose the full size picture with the settings what I make a last on my test print. So now I need to click back for 75 yellow, 75 magenta and a zero on the cyan channel. And repeat the same exposure procedure for the final print and make the same rotation for 45 seconds with the color developer and 45 seconds for bleach fix. And after it we can easily wash the print under the running tap water and analyze what we have as a result. Now on the wet print I'm pretty satisfied with the result. So let's quickly dry it on the wall, apply the squeegee and just take a look 
what the result we have after final printing. For my taste, direct printing usually looks more natural and you have a less dynamic range. And the picture itself looks more like a scene you saw by your eyes and a bit different from the picture what you have uh, taken usually digitally or artificially to make a scene better with the digital scanning. Not sure if it's a good sign or a bad sign, but it's a just different processes and a different taste. But on my eye, I prefer the analog picture better. And as you can understand, you can also scan this picture and make a more enlargement from the same color rendition and the color treatment what you have from the darkroom. And now let's take this picture and frame it on the mat. I actually never tried before, so I have a zero experience and this is my first try uh, on the picture and how it will look like in a framed version. Probably in future I will invest in some tools for this framing, but for now I make a small steps in the direction of the prints, which you can hang up on the wall or deliver in a matted version. So in this case picture looks more finished and it looks more like an art piece and what is also important for me, you make more decisions about your art, how the picture will frame up, what composition you need to keep, which colors you will use for framing, for matting and also where you will put it on the wall and which color the wall is. All the prints what I made by hand I usually sign and put my signature date and usually the place where I take the picture. What I like about the matted pictures, they more rigid, you can take it in the hand and you can actually hold it, don't touching the surface of the picture itself. It's much easier to store the pictures like this and you also can easily pop it up inside the frame or change the framing. Probably in future I will make more approaches like this, because the final result looks really good. And now let's analyze all of the mistakes what I make today and how I realize my final picture with the result which I really like. So the starting point was a bit red and I make a corrections in the direction of the more red and it was the first mistake. So I make a note here that means like yellow magenta goes down, it means my red channel goes up. And the next step I make a proper correction and I print this bigger print which is also was wrong because I take the latest correction and forget to apply the good ones. But because I have a sequence and because I have a lab book it's not a big mistake because you keep your logic on paper it's much easier to go back and fix everything and make the good final picture. So thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.